school, nigga? <laughs> yo, yo, I was in the stu I was in the studio, King, you know, working, man. Yo, I was talking to myself about school, fucking nigga? coronavirus for like 25 minutes waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bro? How you feeling, man? Oh man, I'm feeling good, man. Musically, man, I'm I'm, I'm energized, bro. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, definitely. You know, I, I found it very interesting. I usually have like set questions, but um, I saw during the verses tonight, Redman, mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. very first song he performed was a record that you produced. Yes, how, how to roll a blunt? How, how to roll a blunt? Now, now, talk about that record real quick, because that, that record is synonymous. Like, he literally taught motherfuckers really how to roll a blunt. He it sure a, did. It, it I didn't know that. It has a famous classic sample That record is a famous classic sample. Talk about the record and sample clearing, because I know that's okay. something that guys are struggling with. Um, Back in the days, man, you know, <laughs> we were so happy to be in hip-hop and doing and producing music and making it records mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that mm -hmm. sometimes we take samples we love so much and we don't think about you know what i'm saying like clearing anything you know in the beginning but now mm -hmm. we got to clear everything you know what i'm saying so yeah. i think rising to the top was like you know like that that that's that's like part of his hip-hop history almost like funky drummer like so many people used it over and over and over again yeah you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah, and, uh, yeah, most, most definitely. And uh, that record right there is like when Red used to come to the crib, man. We used to be in my in my basement, man. Before we was mm -hmm. even, before we was even on, mm -hmm. I was working with that dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we was he used to take the Greyhound bus to my house. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I could go mm -hmm. pick him up. Yeah. And then and we, we was he's come to the crib the and my house all day long to my house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I playing with music and, yeah. and doing and then, stuff and, and so we, he's come to the crib and my house came up with all that when I had that my house. You know what I'm saying? And I playing with music and like yeah, doing man. stuff and, and so he's he's gonna take care of him. I came up with that. I had that. I gave him that. You know what I'm saying? I gave him the music. Whatever, man. Yeah. The red man. Go through you, man. We working. We trying to get get. We we trying to get in. But we fit in. And so, mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, at that time, I was just so excited. I, I didn't care about nothing. I just wanted to do beats, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just, like, you know, put music out. Yeah. No, no, super dope. This is Takeover Tuesdays. I'm your host, Infamous Amadeus, here at SOB's Legendary Pete Rock is in the building. People, if you have a question, I will be taking questions. There is this little chat box here, this little question mark thing. Put it, and I will pop it on the screen. Now, Pete, we've been dealing with the loss of legends recently, right? And, you know... It, whenever I hear legends come to mind, one person that always comes to mind that I don't think gets enough recognition is Heavy D, right? Yeah. You're from Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. um, talk about your relationship with Heavy D, and what do you think he meant to the hip-hop industry? Well, that's my family. He's my cousin, so the mm -hmm. relationship yeah. goes back to three years old. Yeah, you know literally. Mm -hmm. So that's fam, like, you know. And then, mm -hmm. you know, like, we, we, we musically... Like all of us in the family, my family, his family, both into music, like mm -hmm. crazy, like crazy, and um, you know, as we grew up together, you know, what I'm saying, like, you know, I looked up to him a lot. Mm -hmm. I followed in his footsteps, or I tried to, as a, as, you know, as, as you know, like the human being side of him. You know, what I'm mm -hmm. saying, like, I always mm -hmm. admired that. And, you know, just having fun with the cat, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Man, you know, it, it goes from baking cookies all the way up to being grown men. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, as kids to grown men. So, in uh, in uh, in his teenage years, because he was the first one in the hood to, you know, get on mm -hmm. in, in, in the music industry and, you know, do it big. So, mm -hmm. he always had me with him. You know, it was one time, <laughs> I always tell the story, like, you know, I, I cried one time, he take me on tour he took the whole block and left me home but then <laughs> a week later i get a call and somebody comes to pick me up and there, there i am on tour with my cousin so it's like i'm carrying records i'm just pete mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying just helping him out mm -hmm. and um like when he got on man it was just like it was just like everyone in the hood was so happy everybody on the block was so happy for him because they seen 
the work that he's done before. He mm -hmm. he, you know, got into the music business and was successful. And then I just kind of was stuck under his arm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he kind of, you know, he he saw something in me too. Mm -hmm. He saw something in me too and was like, "Yo, we gonna bring that out of you, bro." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and um, it it was. It's so much fun being around him, man. Like, yeah, he he. You know, you know, you have. I don't know if you ever had this in your life, man, but you have. You you have one person in your life that sees you, mm -hmm. for who you are, who sees you for who you really are, and even sees things going on that he, he decided to help bring out of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then sticking with him kept me inspired. No. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I, I kind of feel like that with my interactions with Lord Sear. Like, you know, he kind of gave me the chance at radio. I was a cameraman, and yep. you know, kind of, kind of took a chance for me. Um, you know, as an unproven DJ and mm -hmm. as a radio personality, and, and I got to move forward. Now, you've been doing records. I believe what year did the first album come out? Was it ninety one? Was it ninety one? Ninety one. We did an EP called All Sold Out. You know what I'm saying? And that 91. was our first. Yes, nineteen ninety one. That was our first joint. We 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 were working on it in 1990, but it dropped mm -hmm. in 91. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And it was just like we were doing Mecca and the Soul Brother, mm -hmm. but we 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 took like some songs, and we decided to make an EP with it just to throw it out there to see how people are gonna respond to us. You know what I'm saying? And it got great feedback, like super great feedback. And so we continued to mm -hmm. finish the album, and dropped mm -hmm. Mecca and the Soul Brother. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. put Hev on there. He's, he rapped on mm -hmm. the basement. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like he gave mm -hmm. CL Smooth his name. He gave CL Smooth CL Smooth name. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my my cousin Floyd gave me the name Pete Rock. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Pete that's, Rock. That's Hev, yeah, that's Hev's brother. You know, Hev, Hev's brother. I mean, you know, let me let me pull up a fan question real quick because there's a lot of fan questions. Uh, mm -hmm. From Beat Lounge, what is your favorite track of yours? Rock, from beat out of all of them, from, from out of all of my beats, yeah, or, or maybe they're asking like an actual track, maybe that you rapped on. How you know I get asked that same question? Y'all know I can't answer that question. That's a I, was, I made a lot of beats, so I'm like, damn, I gotta pick one. Yeah, I'll say I'll say reminisce then. Reminisce, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah super classic. Because it's a heartfelt classic. song. It's it's like you know when mm -hmm. you hear it, you just you know get emotional you know what i'm saying like that's the whole time i was looking at that whole george floyd thing i was thinking about reminisce man mm -hmm. Super you know dope. Yeah. yeah it's just one of them emotional songs you know what i mean so mm -hmm. it's 420 today mm -hmm. we got that blessing today mm -hmm. and um it was a good day today it was nice outside you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and it's, and it's 420 and you know met him uh uh, uh ref I mean, damn, I'm getting it all. <laughs> meth and red. You know what I'm saying? I'm high a little bit. But <laughs> meth and red was um yeah, I'm 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 you know, meth and red is on versus TV. So you know it's a good day, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, most definitely. Oh, uh, we have we have another question. What's Pete Rock's favorite common resurrection remix beat? Ooh. I'm there was a few of them. Yeah, large professor joints. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. The large joints, like, that stands out like crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's pull some more questions. There's a bunch of them. Just bear with me. I'm um, mm -hmm. just pulling them up. Wait, no, it's actually the same person. I actually can't see it from my end, so I'm just pulling it up. Uh, Warren Wint, who is one person you wanted to do a project with but never got to? Warren Wint. No, nah, let me stop. <laughs> 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 That's my man. Shout out to Warren Wint. What up, bro? Um... Let me see. Probably LL Cool J. We never did nothing. He came to the crib, though, back in the day. Mm -hmm. He blew the block up. All the kids came outside, you know, to mm -hmm. get his autograph. But, yeah, um, LL, me and LL never did nothing really solid. Um, who else? I, I, I worked with Big Daddy Kane, but I wanted to work more with him. We did Don't Curse with Heavy D, which I produced. Mm -hmm. And um, but I wanted to work. I wanted to do a little more with it. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, big. I didn't really get to sink my my claws into him mm -hmm. as far as the beats go. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe one or two more people. 
Yeah. What, 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 would be, what was the reason why you didn't get to work with like LL or, or Big? Was it, you know, maybe just it wasn't the right time? Maybe labels getting involved? Like what would be the reason? It was the right. Probably timing. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm always going to say timing and schedules. And everybody's schedule is crazy and everyone, everyone's doing what they're doing, you know? So mm -hmm. it wasn't nothing like that had to do with any record label or nothing. We just, just, you know what I'm saying? Just, yeah, the music game, man. We sometimes you just, you, you do you're doing this with everybody, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But nobody's like staying, you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of you know passing, but you know whoever sticks to me, I stick to them, and we get it done, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Shout out, to, shout out to Az too, you know, and and shout out to Illmatic producers and everything for for mm -hmm. you know the Library of Congress and and. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Nas for, for you know, a, a, a Illmatic album that's like a big blueprint in hip hop today. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Uh, guys, if you have a question, put it in the chat box. There's a question mark with a chat bubble. I will put it in there. Uh, Pete is actually busy. So, you know, I'll try to get as many questions as I can as we go through. Um, quickly, um, I saw this interesting uh, exchange about the top five MCs of all time. And you're in a very interesting space because you're an MC and a producer. So who is your top five MC slash producers? Producers that rap. Damn, son. Dilla. Yep. Dilla. Matt, Dilla, Mad Lib. Um, mm. Dilla, Mad Lib. Producer rap. Oh, Diamond D. Diamond D. Showbiz. Showbiz. I'm trying to think of producers that rap. Hmm. Um. Damn. I think some more on that one, but yeah, those three so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Four, four, four. Yeah. Um. Q-tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Q-tip, Q-tip. I'm bugging. Q-tip. Yeah. 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 I'm bugging. Yeah. Q-tip. Yeah. Who else? Somebody else. That's rapping DJing. Who? Mm -hmm. Uh, hat. Well, rap, rapper producer Havoc. Oh gosh, Havoc to me Havoc he's rapper. like number two. Number two. Rapper and producer. Yeah, on Havoc, my list, definitely. Havoc is like number number two, man. Because his raps make that happen, man. Yeah. But I'm gonna say Dilla, Madlib, Havoc, Diamond. Um. Eric Sermon. Eric Sermon. Word. Eric Sermon. Eric Sermon. A, a, yeah. a lot of people Eric Sermon. I want to ask you about some records that you've done with people. Um, who is it easier to produce for, Kid and Player or Will Smith and Jazzy Jeff? Hmm. Because they're, they're both like acting, like acting rappers, even though Will was a rapper of uh, previous. Uh, but you know what? If the, the, you got to think of the time frame, you know, when all that was. You know, Kid and Play was popping and everything, and Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. And when you heard Jeff transform for the first time on on, on vinyls, like, <gasps> mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, mm, I, I I thought Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince were very interesting. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, but um, um, Kid and Play, man, they they just had it popping. You know, with the with with the music and with the house party movies and. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I was just I was just very lucky to you know be a part of you know their their album and what yeah. I did for them. You know, uh, uh, who else, man? Gooby Chill back in the day. This we talking about the beginning now. The beginning, you know? yeah, yeah. When yeah. I was just a little wet behind the ears mm -hmm. producing, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you know, as I moved along, you know, things just got bigger and better, and I, I was learning. You know, mm -hmm. the the part I wasn't learning was the business, but the the part I was learning was like the studio and how to, yeah how to you know conduct myself when it comes to my own equipment mm -hmm. and music and and how to you know you know move in the studio. Yeah, I had to, I had to learn it because you know when I first got with um, my engineer Jamie, I ain't, I ain't know what I was doing, mm -hmm. and me and him was was like clashing with each other because. We was, we was we was trying to figure it out, you know. Mm -hmm. 
And then the more I worked with him, the better it got. So he, he helped me along the way as well. So. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll m moving on to the resume, Run DMC, Down With The King. Mm -hmm. Classic. So talk yes. about that, how, how that record came about. Rest in, rest in peace to Jam Master Jay. You know, yes. Jay, Jay, I worked closely with DMC and Jay with that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, shout out to Run, Rev Run, Russell, you know. That's what that's what the the time frame was then, and I had to do some some serious like I had to prove myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to prove myself. You know, and Jay Jam Master Jay was the one who voiced how much he believed in me because he heard, you know, the the previous work I've been doing, and he's like, "We're gonna get we're gonna get this done, Pete." Mm -hmm. And so we worked closely together on Down With The King. He actually was tapping on the drum machine, the, that drum pattern that you hear mm -hmm. on Down With The King. And he yeah. was like, Yo, that's, that's how I want you to do program that. And I just mm -hmm. hit the record button. I said, you do it. And he did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I just, you know, touched it up some. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Put my Pete Rock on it. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. we made history, man, because, you know, it was pretty dark in the beginning. I didn't, you know, you know, like, you know, when you're the young, you know, you, you know, you got the OGs in it looking at you like, who's this? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Who's this dude? You know what I mean? And yeah. I had to prove myself, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I did that with them, and that came out the way it came out. Man. You know? Shout out to Run DMC. Shout, shout out to Run DMC. Another one of my favorite Pete Rock joints is the Big L in the Big Picture. Uh, with yeah. Stan Spitted and Miss Jones uh, holding it down. Now, was that record done... Post Big L death or while he was alive? He was he was gone at that point. I, we didn't do it together. We didn't do it together. But we had experience with each other. When I got mm -hmm. my first whip, it was a black Honda Accord EX sunroof. Put mm -hmm. the rims on it. Had the system in there. And I went and picked them up on 139th in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And we just drove around all day. And I had beat tapes in the car. And so I was popping them in, and he just, he ain't stopped rapping. Mm -hmm. We went to the Bronx. We went to, um, I think we might have went to Queens. We went to the mm -hmm. Bronx, Queens. We went to Harlem, back, back to Harlem. And he ain't stopped rapping, man, the whole time, man. And I was impressed, man. And I was like, I can't wait to get this done with you, bro. Like, we was, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, we, we did that joint, you know. We ended up doing that. Yeah, I mean the obvious one, Illmatic, Nas, the world is yours. I mean, mm -hmm. well, they obviously assembled the most elite producers at the time with this young sixteen-year-old kid who was super on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the record, the world is yours. And did you guys have a sense while recording and creating this particular record and the album in general that what it was going to turn out to be long term? Uh, we knew he was dope, but when the album started to formate, formulate. Um, we was like, whoa, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was like, whoa. And then, you know, Primo and all those guys would come with the beats. And I'm like, damn, man. No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. what am I do? And then, you know, <laughs> you, you know, I just, it was something, it was a beat I had already made, though. It was already made. Like, okay. And I was popping in discs when Nas came to the crib and, I popped that one in. I still got that disc right now, mm -hmm. and um, and it still works. And it um, still works. yeah, and he, I popped that in the SB twelve hundred, mm -hmm. and um, he he he, you know, I was about to play the next beat. He was like, "Hold up, nah, let that mm -hmm. let that rock." And then he just was doing some stuff in his head, and then told me, "Yo, I want you to sing the hook." And then I ended up singing the hook. And then we worked on it at Battery Studios, which yeah. was the same studio Jive had their record label in. We worked on it in there. You know, when I did the scratches and everything, Primo was there. And, you know, he saw me, you know, get 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 that done. And then we went off to mix the song. And I felt like, damn, this one's big. Mm -hmm. You know, so this one's memorable. So I was like, this is what he needs. And um, he made it happen. He made it happen. Yeah, I gave him a beat. He just made the record. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm.
Yeah, and, and he put it through. By far, out of your whole uh, production catalog, interesting enough, my favorite beat is the Joy, uh, Jay Z oh. and Kanye. They, you know what? There's just something about this this beat that just makes me want to just drop the top of the car and just ride through Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, that's that an old Joy classic. Talking. That's yeah. an old classic right there, bro. Like moms and pops used to listen to that shit a lot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, this is my my one chance I got to work with Jay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, through Kanye, but it happened. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's on the deluxe version of uh, Watch the Throne. Yeah, Watch the Throne, yeah. 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 So, yep, that's... that's And then um, the story goes, I'm driving home one day, and Young, young Guru calls me mm -hmm. on the phone, and he's playing playing the joint with Kanye on the Joy joint. And then it was a little bit grainy. I couldn't hear the verse. So I pulled over and, you know, turned the radio down and listened through the phone. And then I heard Jay-Z rapping. And I was, I was like, whoa, you know, like, that's Jay, man? We've been chasing each other for a long time, trying to work with each other. But mm -hmm. um, some for somehow, some reason, we didn't. We didn't get to work with each other until I got with Kanye. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it kind of formed him. Yeah, and that was kind of a big surprise for me because I was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, And, and he mm -hmm. killed it and he spit my name in there. So that was that was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, he definitely went in. Oh, let's pop. There's tons of fan questions. I'll just try to pop on as many as I can. Obviously, I can't see them until I pop them on the screen. Uh, so, Brother 16. Pete Rob, where do you go shopping for your vinyl records? <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. But there's like, you know, there's the, there's the record stores are all around. Y'all don't really got to tell you where I go. You know what I'm saying? But you could go, you know, if you bump into me, you might bump into me. I've been to every goddamn store. You know what I'm saying? So you might bump into me somewhere, so. If that's what you do, then you you you'll have a good chance of seeing me in a record store. Yeah, most mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, let's pop in some more questions. Uh, Beat Lounge. What what was your first sample of drum machine? Um, I mean, I was playing with all that stuff when I was like twelve years old, eleven years old. The DX, the TR eight hundred eight. I mean. I will just play with it. I ain't know how to program nothing. I'll just, mm -hmm. I'll just, I'll just be tabbing on it. And um, the SB12, the SB12, which had an external hard drive, you know. Then they came out with the 1200, which I fell in love with. And and you know, when I got it from Eddie F, I just took it to my room, and nobody couldn't find me for months. Mm -hmm. and, you know, people was like, "Yo, why Pete ain't?" on the block, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I'm in here trying to learn something. You know what I mean? <laughs> trying to learn how to use this machine. You know, I, mm -hmm. I love music, so I want to learn how to make it. You know what I'm saying? I always was like, wanted to be the fly on the wall everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When it came to like, you know, musicians. And that's one good thing about have that he did was bring me around the producers I loved when I was just, you know, Mm -hmm. A spectator in this, you know what I'm saying? I was at Molly House, Howie T, Teddy Riley crib, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that that was enough. The between them three, Molly, Teddy, and Howie, that's all I needed. That's all the that's all the um, inspiration that I needed to to know that this is what I wanted to do in my life. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Definitely. So I just put my best foot forward, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I am Flyboy. Do you listen to any African hip hop artists, and would you like to work with anyone? You know what? I listen to a lot of Afro beat. Period, like Afro yeah. beat. But uh, as far as artists, I I don't know many. You know what I'm saying? Only know the ones that are here who've been Americanized. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I don't know no straight up African rappers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and maybe we need some out there, man. But I feel like, you know, any newcomer should always study the greats. 
yes. from MCs yes. to, to to DJs to producers. You always got to study the blueprint if you want to be successful in hip hop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought that up before I get to this next fan question. I was interviewing Fiend from No Limit, and, and you know, he, he was telling me that we're not getting enough big homie talk. Like, we're, mm. we're not getting en enough of the elder statesmen talking to these kids. Kind of like how it was, you know, back then. Like, you would test the younger generation. A KRS, a KRS one would test a Nas, or this person would test that guy, or L would test cannabis. Uh, why do you think, in, in your opinion, we're not getting that in, in 2021? It's a different, it's a different breed of generation bro it's not mm -hmm. you know it ain't you know we were we came with dignity and we came with you know a way with our talent like we we, we paved the way we was you know you know like the workers do on the street that's what we was doing in hip-hop mm -hmm. and so from cats like me i expect you know the younger generation to come in this with the knowledge of what we did but instead, mm -hmm. they're coming in with their own type of thing. And I ain't mm -hmm. mad at it. I used to be mad at it, but I ain't mad, mm -hmm. I ain't mad at it now. I'm just like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Every, mm -hmm. every Now hip-hop has prisms, meaning that there's different. You can pick your poison, man. You know what I'm saying? You could pick what type of hip-hop you like. And for me, I just like making real stuff. You know what I'm saying? Real shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I like I like making real real music, so that yeah. attracts real artists. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, we we were having some conversation about this before you got on, where it's like hip hop is so subjective. The listener can kind of you know tap in. I think a lot of people got stuck like in two thousands or whatever, like they didn't migrate. But I mean, we do have artists on it to drop the album. You recently had an album with Flea Lord. You know, there there are music. Why doesn't the consumer cross over? In your opinion, do you think it's terrestrial radio? Do you think it's just, you know, they grow up and just have too much things going on where they can't listen to music anymore? It feels like hip hop is the only place that does this. I think when Wu Tang came out with their street success and their grimy, dark beats, I think if you're original with it, you it, it, it can work for you. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. Griselda, you know what I mean? Came out yeah. with straight hardcore beats, no commercial. You ain't hear them on the radio, but they blew. Mm hmm. And so that means that we that we made the the niche. We made we you know, we we, we set the president for what hip hop is supposed to sound like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know, I think groups like Wu Tang inspired the Griseldas and all the other crews, dip set, every all of that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um What's, what makes Wu so original is that they had nine dope niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, that blew everyone away. But the commercial, it's just, it's just, it's just a different, you know, be, you know, we have standards and morals. Yeah. And that we stand by. Mm -hmm. And that um, we, we, just, we just not doing what the new guys are doing when it comes to that type of thing. And so we'd rather not go commercial. We'd rather stay real. Mm -hmm. Commercial, they want you to do X, Y, and Z now. It's too much. They put on your head that if you want to blow up and be successful. It's just like, nah, you ain't got to do all that, man. Mm -hmm. You just got to have dope talent. You got to have talent, and you got to make a road for yourself. You know what I'm saying? But these... Yeah. Some of the people, they just don't know how to do that all by themselves or don't know how to go about it, so they just follow everything that happens. Yeah. You know, you know we're obviously here at SOBs. Um, any legendary stories, SOBs, maybe performing, maybe DJing, maybe just being at SOBs? Anything legendary I, I, that stands out? I DJed in there so many nights. I remember the, 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 the night that sticks out to me is when Prodigy was alive and we was all hanging out in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Troy Ave was performing, mm. and um, me, Prodigy, everybody, all the whole hip nori, a bunch of motherfuckers down there in the green room, and we taking pictures and just laughing and smoking and chilling, and you know, me and P was kicking it, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, like SOBs was that was the spot, man. Performances was crazy. I mean, I did performances by myself there, and then you know. Rocking with other artists there, you know what I'm saying? 
um, it was fun, man. SOB's got a lot of history. Yeah. Especially in New York. New York shit, man. New York all the way through. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier, earlier, I heard you mention Eric Sermon. Eric Sermon um, has a company called TrackLib, where it's essentially mm -hmm. like you clear your samples. And I saw someone kind of ask this question. I, I find it interesting. When should an artist or a producer realistically think about clearing a sample? In your opinion, when do you think it's time for them to be like, all right, you know what, I, I really gotta when they when they when, when they when they when they when they come at you saying you owe me ten grand <laughs> or twenty grand for using my music, that's that's real talk. Yeah, all the way through, it's, take it to the yeah, end. <laughs> yeah, that's real talk. They, they, they as soon as they take the hatchet out, bro, it's it's a wrap. You know what I mean? But um um, it was so much fun and the, the music was touching our soul so much we we just kind of wasn't thinking about we was just having fun with what we learned you know what i'm saying and yeah and making the hits and making dope beats you know what i'm saying and now i do i do you know beats without samples now so yeah original yep original stuff and make it sound as gritty as possible mm -hmm. um uh, you know, I did Peace Tremendous 3 a little different this time, but, you know, I'm going to go back on Peace Tremendous 4 to the grime, to the grimy beats, and beats that cast in take or hair or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I got oh, the SB 1200 series I'm doing, I do, which I'm doing part two for, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's crazy. And then, um, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just having fun again. Man. I feel like, I'm feeling like, I'm 25 when I'm in the studio. Which is important to have that rejuvenated energy when you're creating. Now, you know, SOB is a big platform full of independent artists. There's a lot of independent yeah. artists watching. Independent artists are going to watch this after. And you said something very interesting about learning the business. Like me as a media person, I really try to push this on these kids. It's like, you know, music is 90% business, 10% music. Yeah. Do, do, do independent artists need to have the right people around them to learn the business or should they go about it learning themselves? Like in the situation, like nobody's going to take care of you like you, like in your opinion. Be around someone who truly wants to see you make it, but show them your ambition, show them that, that you're willing and able to, you know, because this is something that you want to do in your life. If they can see something like that in you, then they'll, you know, the good people will be around you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You want to go about it on your own, you could do that too, but you got to read. Mm -hmm. Feel me? And then once you get the knowledge, then maybe you can pull some shit off by yourself. Yeah. But then there's distribution, there's the, you know, how to distribute your music and get it out there and promote it, and, you know whatever trinkets that come along with it, like merch and all that stuff, you, you know, all that plays a part in your, you know, path. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's important that young kids know the business. Yeah, no, it, it's super important. It's also important building a body of work. Now, you have an amazing body of work. Um, Thank you. You know, co Thank collaborative. You. It, uh, which album is better, Soul Survivor 1 or 2, in your opinion? Two probably, I, I, you know, one was real dope though, but I'm I say two because I didn't like. I was real, I don't know, I I don't know if I ever said this before, but I ain't like the way I rhymed on that album. Really? Yeah. Why? What was the problem? I don't know. I just ain't like it. You know what I'm saying? I'm the, my own worst enemy when it came to that record. I felt I could have did way better. You know what I'm saying? I could have rapped way better because I'd be. When I make beats, I rap too. Like I be writing shit. Like damn, I should have fucking wrote that down. Mm -hmm. Damn, there's a lot of lines that just went in and out my head, mm -hmm. and I couldn't remember what I said again. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? That shit was kind of dope. So, I, you know, I, it has to be. I have to feel it in order to. Yeah. You know, the beat. The beat has to bring it out of me. The music usually does. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you know, it's 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 a hard that that part of it is kind of hard. I don't see how certain rappers be 
you know, the ones that write, I got to commend them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Shit ain't easy. Shit's not easy to put words together and make it make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. when you spit it right and you flowing right and you got the mm -hmm. right beat. You got the right beat and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, w was there ever a beat that you gave to someone else that you were like, fuck, I should have kept that for me? Damn. Mm. Can't think. Come back to that one. <laughs> or, or, or maybe, or, or, or maybe, or maybe a beat. Let's say um, you had and you passed on. Hmm. We talking about a lot of beats here, bro. Like, it's hard to just, you know, pick one. You know, or think of one. Um, let me see though. Um, hmm. Yeah, come back to that one. I have to come back. You know, I, I saw a lot of people in the comments talking about the Shut Em Down remix beat, which is obviously one of the, one of the good. What, one well, maybe maybe we'll say that one then, because it's a remix. You know, remixes don't count. You get a fee, but you don't. It doesn't. It doesn't pay you for the rest of your life. You know, one of one of one of the beats that I thought that you would always sound dope on spitting was the Rock Kitten Saga Begins. Mm. Mm. That, that yeah, he Ra loved that beat. I, I remember the look on his face when I played the cassette when I was at D and D. I went to go see Primo and Rock Kim was over there, and um, I pulled out this cassette in my back pocket, and I had the Saga Begins beat on there and. When he heard it, he was just like, yo. <laughs> I was like, what? You want that? It's on now. That, that beat is tough. Because I was, just, you know, some beats I just made with nobody in mind. And then, mm -hmm. you know, then he likes it. And I'm like, oh, the God likes it? Damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I got to do what I got to do to, to, you know, to make the God comfortable. Most definitely. Shout out DJ Evil D in the check. And I actually got to get him on here. Let's pop in like two, three fan questions before beat we minus. get out of here. Beat, beat minus, man. Oh. Beat minus. All right, let's see. Uh, I love to do a master class with Pete Rock and another legend. Uh, I'm not really too sure what they're saying. Uh, they're thinking about, uh, they're asking if you're thinking about doing an autobiography or would you do like an autobiography or maybe like yep, a I am. Film. I'm working on it. I'm working on a book too. A book too. Like a book. I'm working on yeah, a like book. That. And I'm working on a, you know, I'm working on some shit. Yeah, most It's definitely. a lot of history, so, you know, it's got to be is. told. There is. It's got to be told. Uh, someone wants to know about the track, Get on the Mic. Uh, Me and CL Smooth joint. Yep. That was a good song. Good record. You know, 1994. Main ingredient album. Um, And we, uh, you know, Made it, made it like one of one of the like people liked. I hear a lot of people say they like main ingredient versus Mech and the Soul Brother, you know, because yeah, you know, main ingredient was got a little more mature. You know what I'm saying? I that's when I really learned like what it took to you know, what All it right. took to make a, a hit record. Mm -hmm. Straight through, trying to pull up as many questions as I can before we yeah, get out so, of here. Yeah. Uh, 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 Reggie Nobel Prize, we ever released the beat sure. and remixes you played on Future Flavors? Say that again, bro. Uh, Reggie Nobel Prize is asking, will you ever release the beats and remixes you played on Future Flavors? Of course I would. Yep. I'm, I'm thinking about doing that right now. I'm gathering up dats. You remember the dat machines and stuff like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of remixes, like Big L, like, when we talk about Madonna, Mick Jagger, you know, mm -hmm. I've done remixes that never came out. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. Any any crazy story on, on, on the dat machines? Um, I interviewed Daz. You hear me? So, and any crazy stories with that? Because I, I interviewed Daz, and he was telling me about the Got My Mind Made Up record where they had Inspector Deck, and apparently Dre didn't transfer Inspector Deck's uh, verse over, so that's why he's not on the song. And anything like that happened ever with, like, a dad, like, maybe, like, a verse or, like, some shit got erased, and he couldn't go back and get it, maybe some classic record that may have happened, but it just got lost? Um, yeah, man, there's a lot of foul-ups and 
blunders and bloops <laughs> in yeah. the studio. Yeah, we we went through that a lot. You know what I'm saying? But you know, um, it all worked out in the end. You know, mm -hmm. like I I remember making rather unique in the studio and the assistant in there because I I never made a beat in the studio. I always make my beats at home. So when I was in the lab, you know, when I finished the beat, I was like, ooh, hey, go mm. love this shit. And then mm. the assistant hit the power strip by accident and no more beat. Oh. I didn't save the shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I had to make it again. <sighs> and so what you hear now is the makeover. Ooh. Oh, that, that. <laughs> That's super classic. I, I thought it was better the way I had it at first because I did more stuff and with the you know I was doing more stuff with the beat and everything, mm -hmm. and then the homie homie kicked the, the the strip and the shit cut off and I got mm -hmm. pissed. I was pissed off. Damn that! I can't, I can't, I kicked I kicked him out. I kicked that dude out. I kicked him out. <laughs> and then shout out to my boy Gingy Brown. You know what I'm saying? He became like mm -hmm. the dope assistant. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And was an eyewitness to a lot of this shit I was doing back then. Yeah. Uh, Danny for short is asking, you ever think of doing the verses? Love you, Uncle Pete. Now, obviously, verses is happening right now. Have you ever been approached doing the verses? And if you had to pick someone to do a verses with, who would it be and why? Mm, I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I threw names out there already, but nobody, nobody, you know, nobody, I try, you know, uh. I, I, the only verses that'll go down correct is me and DJ Premier. You know what I'm saying? DJ like, Premier, yeah. You know, or it could be, I mean, any of the dope producers now that's out now, you know, mm -hmm. but everyone is always comparing me and Primo because so of our history. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, parallel careers. So that's, and we already had a brand with, with it, you know. Pete Rock versus Premier. We made T-shirts, hats, all that. We was gonna do an album and everything. We was on tour with it, and um, you know, but but it, we we never did a verses. I never did a verses. I, I think I, I I think you and Havoc would make a good pair. Yeah. The the the, the production rapping. Combo. I think I would pair good with anyone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think with anybody, it good. don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Pete Rock, uh, Pete Rock versus uh, Evil D said Pete Rock versus Premier versus Dr. Dre. Ooh, ooh, wow! Now that, that's, that's, le that's legend. So it's cloth talk that's, there. And that's some <laughs> shit right there. That's some shit right there. Like that's some mm -hmm. shit I probably would do if it was us three. But that that probably be too big for verses. Yeah, no, that that'd be crazy. It'll, it'll get shut down. I'll take two more fan questions before we wrap up. I'm just gonna pop whatever I kind of see in the screen. Uh. Will you ever drop the track Greenbacks officially? That's one of my favorite tracks <laughs> that you ever done. Maybe, maybe, maybe. You're like mm -hmm. the 16th person that asked me about that song. About Greenbacks? Uh, yeah, I, I was like 16, 17 when I rapped on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You, you, know, you know, as we're talking about this, I'm seeing some interesting verses. Uh, Pete Rock versus Q-Tip, Pete Rock versus 45 King. Pete Rock That'll versus be. Diamond, yeah, Forty Five King. You know what? I, I, it don't matter though. Like it don't even matter. Like I, I just, just if we're gonna do it, let's just do it already. Like people keep calling it out, and doing this and doing that, and, but it, it ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I'm it, not it, thinking about. I'm not thinking about it versus. I'm doing music in the studio, new music. That's fucking. Oh my god. Yeah, that, that we're, we're super excited to hear, it. and I know the fans are definitely. Excited to hear. I'll take one more fan question before we got out of here. Um, do you think technically, do you think technology, I think is what you're saying, has improved hip hop? Improved hip hop? Yeah. Yeah. There's some there's some there's some new equipment out there that I'm like feeling and it's making hip hop more fun. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's making beat making more fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just making now. Today, I'm just in my own world when it comes to hip-hop. I fuck with who want to fuck with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't go chasing nobody no more and, you know, doing none of that stuff. Because, you know what, I'm just going to make music regardless. Whether I'm in your face or not, I'm still going to be out here. You know what I'm saying? So, 
you know, um, there's a lot of good, good music being made with the new equipment that's out. You know, the new drum machines and the keyboards and the, you know the ASRs, the MPs, and you know I'm I'm an old school dude. I stick with the old tools, but I have been on that MP for 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 a good amount of years. Mm -hmm. And um, got used to it, you know. So I look yeah. at the 2000 XL like an upgraded SP, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, so Pete, um, I, I appreciate you taking time to come kick it to us here. At SOBs, of course, is legendary. We can't wait till the venue opens back up, get you in Definitely. there, get a set going, get some performance going. Um, so 2021, what's in store for Pete Rock? We have projects coming out. You said you're working on some new music. What can the fans look forward to? I have a I have a label now, man. On, uh, mm. You know, True Soul is the name of it, and True Soul Records. And I got my first artist, Amir, the 25th Hour Man, who's highly intelligent and can spit. And it's very interesting stuff we're doing, and I'm I'm excited every day. Mm. You know, the, and I got um, the Soul Brothers, you know, uh, Pete Rock and the Soul Brothers. And shout out to the Soul Brother crew. We did Peace from Metals 3 with, and... um. We, I have a band, and I'm rocking with them, and we're gonna do an album, and you know, rocking with some surprise people that I won't say their names, but you know, when you hear it, you're gonna be excited. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, you know, uh, uh, Pete Rock. Final question: When it's all said and done, what do you want the Pete Rock legacy to be? Um, that people look at me that really want to do music and take take what I did seriously and take what they do seriously and use me as a blueprint. You don't yeah. got to sound like me. You ain't got to, you know, you, you, you could take the, the, the work ethic and apply it to what you do in your way, in your own life. Like I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't say I sounded like anybody. Um, when I first started, you know, my career started picking up. I, I kind of took, you know, from everybody that I loved, you know, and, and said, I, right, I don't want to sound like them, but I, I, I want to do the same thing they doing, you know, and I just had that mentality, man. And became yeah. Pete Rock. You know what I'm saying? And, and became Pete Rock. And we definitely appreciate your contribution to hip hop. And we look forward to that. Not only have your SOBs, but hearing uh, the new project, take over Tuesdays. I'm the infamous Amadeus. Listen listening to me at Sirius XM, Shade 45, the Lord's here special, Thursday, 3 to 4. I'll be up that's there. Right. I'll be up that's there. Right. To be, yeah, I'll be up there to do a set. You already know. That's, that's right. We got to get Pete Rock on. You've been on a few times on Wednesday. We look forward to having you. And if they want to follow you at the real Pete Rock, what's the name of the label again? Uh, True Soul. You know, you could follow. I have a page, True Soul, on IG. You know, I got my page real pete rock you could follow me you could follow me on twitter you could follow me on facebook you know what i'm saying yeah de definitely tap in with pete rock make sure you follow me infamous on this pete i appreciate you i'll catch up with you thank you brother all right thanks pete. one love kid you already know one